Hello fellow YouTubers, and in continuation of my look at all things Cruiser, I'm now looking at the Miyoko. This is a Japanese classic. This ship has been in the game as long as it's been a game, to be honest. And it's probably one of the first cruisers that I fell in love with all those many years ago. She's a bit of a wicked fire starter. Uh, she's all about the HE. Uh, although the AP is strong if you can catch a light cruiser broadside. Okay, let's plunge into it. Let's have a look at uh, how you would equip this ship. She's tier 7 as well. Let's look at the tech tree, actually. She's tier 7. I'll show you where she sits. Okay, if you look at the uh, Japanese tech tree, the Miyoko sits here at tier 7. And she's on the same line as the Megami, the Ibuki, and of course the Zhao. The Aoba is also a pretty fine cruiser, as is Frutaka. Um, in fact, it's quite a good line to grind. If you haven't grabbed this line, I thoroughly recommend it. Uh, there are a lot of very nice ships in this line. And the Zhao... Mm, okay, a very controversial ship, but trust me, she's up there with the Yodo, that's for sure. Um, I, I would argue that she's... Probably better than Yoda, but I don't have a Yodo, so I can't really make that stick. I, um, I, I am on the way to the Yodo, though. So, that's a to be continued. Um, okay, so, let's have a look at the equipment. Okay, so, for the first module, I'd go with Main Armors Modification 1, because your guns are your bread and butter. It also uh, helps to keep your torpedo tubes alive. And then in the second slot, we go for Hydro Search to get an extra 20% on the uptime of the Hydro. And then... Huh, main Battery Modification 2 to help with the Gun Traverse, because the Gun Traverse on this ship is pretty dreadful. If we look at Artillery, we can see... It takes 27 seconds with that to turn 180 degrees. So the turrets do turn incredibly slowly. She is already quite accurate, and... Sure, you could put Aiming System Modification 1 in there instead, but if you were like me, at a point where you were happy with the dispersion, I would strongly recommend taking Main ma Battery Modification 2 to improve that incredibly slow turret traverse. Okay, in the fourth slot, we've got Propulsion Modification 1, which is pretty much uh, a given to allow her to speed up a little quicker and jink or juke shots all right so you do get aa defensive fire in this ship but i always go with hydro the aa defense is pretty average and trust me this isn't going to make a lot of difference to that whereas hydro can help you spot destroyers in smoke you can help you spot submarines that are doing cheeky stuff underneath you not particularly good at that but um it's there we have this wonderful new consumable instead, the Submarine Surveillance, which is uh, detects subs under the water to a range of six kilometers. Y you're a bit stuffed if they're on the surface, but I guess if you use these two combined, you could spot a sub on the surface up to four kilometers. Uh, submarines at depth is only two kilometers, but then of course you can use this, the Submarine Surveillance. So this was added recently to the line. Uh, you get this on the Zhao now as well, uh, and the Ibuki and uh, the Mogami. So it gives her a little bit more utility, and she gets two attack flakes in her airstrike, which allows her to drop a uh, payload of one bomb per attack flight at a range of six kilometers. Not very far, unfortunately. Six kilometers is quite short range. Maneuverability, she's quite fast. She can do 36.8 knots with the speed flag. She's got a turning circle radius of 780 meters and a rudder shift of 7.1 seconds. And her concealment is pretty good for a heavy cruiser. She has 11.5 kilometer conceal. Artillery, she gets five turrets with twin 203 millimeter rifles. Uh, fire chance is very good, 19% per shell, and of course she gets 10 of them every 14 seconds. That's the reload time. And the range isn't so great. Uh, we're talking 15.6 kilometers, but 
you can camp behind islands with this ship and hail HE rounds on people with impunity and get quite a lot of fires going. Uh, not much to say about the secondaries. Let's have a look at the hit points. 42,350 and she's got a torpedo protection of 13%. Okay, if we uh, check out the armor layout, you can see the nose is 16 mil. Not particularly great. Easily farmed. Uh, similar story with the aft. She's got quite a big superstructure here of 13 mil. Also very easy to farm. Her deck plating is 32 millimeters, however, so you might get lucky every now and then and bounce a few HE rounds off that. If we take the sides off and the nose off, to give you a better idea, exotic is what I'd say here. Got this soft armor above, 6 mil, and then you've got the citadel below, which is 76 mil, and well below the waterline, eventually becoming 63 mil. Side armor thickness of 102 millimeters. It's quite a big citadel. It's quite a long citadel. You really don't want to be showing broadside in this ship unless you are undetected. Uh, she's not that hard to citadel. And that makes her quite a challenging ship to play. Or at least you would think. Okay. Let's have a look at the captain's build. Okay, so... What I've gone with here is you'd start with Last Stand to keep your rudder uh, available and your engine available. You'd be surprised how many times I've had my rudder knocked off in this ship. I don't know why, but the rudder is actually quite weak. So Last Stand is pretty much a must. Uh, priority Target to give you that information about enemy ships targeting you. And also, of course, if the number drops and lifts again, someone's just torpedoed you. So it's good to know. Uh, then Superintendent, then Concealment Expert, that's your first 10 points. Then after that, Adrenaline Rush, Survivability Expert to get the hit points up. And then your choice between Grease the Gears or RPF. I would probably take Grease the Gears first to get the turrets working and then finish the build with RPF. Although, this wouldn't be a terrible pick. Top grade gunner, just to bring the main battery reload time down when enemy ships are close by um, also if you want to dump RPF and you hate submarines and planes you could always take this it'll also bring back uh, your consumables a little quicker but I personally go with RPF that's the recommended anyway okay hmm let's take this ship for a spin okay so um I'm going through the replays and I'm picking out Miyoko game for you and I will critique the highs and the lows. Um, hopefully this will give you guys a better idea of how to play heavy cruisers, uh, especially ones with the 203s. Um, it's Trident, it's Domination and it's an on-tier match with carriers, uh, one, one CV aside. The CVs will make it a little awkward, but... It's quite a low tier game, so be an opportunity for me to show you the pluses and minuses. The problem with Trident or this map is islands. You will need an island. And the best island on this side of the map with the Miyoko, honestly, is the island at G3. See that island at G3? If you spawn on the other side of the map, you'd probably be better off going to the islands at D3. Or C2. Uh, if you find yourself on the other side of the map, you could contest the island at C at uh, F9. But I don't know. You you might get overrun. That's the problem with that. You'd probably be better off literally sailing across to the other flank. Uh, another reason why people tend not to play cruisers much is because there aren't that many cruiser maps. In other words, maps where the islands are placed exactly where you need them. And you quite often find yourself spawning where you need an island, but it's not available. So you have to open water gunboat, as it were. <laughs> and you can see my videos on open water gunboating. I've uh, check out my Lucian and my Mogador, my Clever. 
all good open water gunboats if you want to know what the play style is. Okay, so the Ark Royal sent planes straight at me. And my incredibly crap AA is going to make short work of them. The only reason being that he's tier 6. Now I'm going to turn into the torpedoes so that I can find the gap. Looking for the gap now. Oh. Yeah. Try not to set too much rudder when you, you know, when you look for gaps. Because you can quite often just float straight into one. Uh, I was quite fortunate there. Also, I think the Nagato had a crack at me. Yeah, there it goes. And uh, because we were well angled, uh, we got away with it. And now I'm just going to slow my speed. And I'm literally going to park it behind this island. Uh, I can see the Shan horse is pushing. Uh, he should light targets for me. And the York. Uh, it's definitely not your job to light targets and, and scout. That's usually the role of destroyers, carriers and submarines. Unfortunately, there's only one destroyer in this game, the Nicholas, and he's on the opposite flank. Which is kind of annoying. So, I'm literally just waiting for an opportunity. I can see I'm in range of the Asturias, uh, but I've got this big rock in my way, so I'm going to have to edge it up a bit. Also, I'm lit by the planes, so now is not a good time. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. Uh, the Emil Bertin obviously had the same idea I did. I see it ran me off the map. And finally, I can see a potential target or a victim at the Heinrich. So I'm opening up with HE. The whole idea here is to set as many fires as I can on the Heinrich. And in true Miyoko style, three hits, one fire. <laughs> Now, if I can get a second fire on him, he'll probably damage Con. Let's see. See if I can get a second fire with this spread. Nope. Okay, seven good hits, though. And four pens, so reasonable damage. Okay, we're going to try now. I can only seem to get the fronts over this island because it's quite a big island. So we'll play with position in a minute. And there you go. So now I've got two fires on him. Top right, you can see he's burning. And the damage meter is ticking. It's stopped. The reason it stopped is he's DC'd. He's damaged con those two fires. So at this point, I know that if I set any more fires on the Heinrich, they're going to be perm perma fires. So I'm moving my ship up forward so I can get better angle, trying to ignore the CV as best I can. <laughs> and uh, I'm waiting for the Heinrich to uh, come out of hiding. There he is. Okay. And then we can start looking for those perm fires so a fire on the Heinrich from behind the island I'm not detected and he gets a fire that's perm damage right there and no one's seen me apart from the carrier who every now and then flies me but you get the idea okay I'm lit so I hit reverse and just reverse her a fraction just a little bit not much just enough to go dark again Well, something's got me lit. Doesn't look like I'm going to be allowed to. Anyway, I'm going to work on my position because uh, clearly I'm not at the right spot of the island. So we're just going to... Uh, I think it's the planes that are the problem here. Now the Heinrich's very low health. And we finish him off, but someone else got the kill. But you get the idea. If the team had left the Heinrich alone, I could have... Uh, burned him down and got arsonist very easily okay so I'm going back behind the island again those planes are a problem I'm going to fire some shots at the Miyoko but he seems to be maneuvering so I probably won't hit with any of those okay ender act On low health. We'll try about there. You can see I'm behind the island again, and for a moment I was not lit. And Kabui. Okay, so we got the iron ring. We got the Endrak. Right. And so for the last four minutes I've been behind this island, I managed to get three fires and 25k health down. I've sunk a ship, and I'm still on full health. And that's the element of cruiser play right there. If you use the islands well, 
you'll stay on full health and you'll be able to rain hell on anyone who comes nearby and be a bit of a wicked little fire starter. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to push up now with the Koenig. Um, I believe that's what I do next anyway. Because uh, I'm going to head to the other island. There's another island. Oh, how exciting. Because the team, you see the enemy team has withdrawn. And because the enemy team has withdrawn, a new island has become available at EF2. The line between E and F at 2. You see the uh, our carriers just put a uh, fighter patrol on it for me. And I'm, that's the island I'm heading to next. There's uh, absolutely no reason why I shouldn't be shooting at the New York around about now. I guess I was distracted by the planes. That's quite funny. <laughs> now, when you can't see a ship, you see it's behind the island. If you look at the minimap, you'll see there's a little round circle. That's your aim site, if you like. And I'm putting the circle right on the nose of the New York with the hope of being able to hit him blind and blind firing over the top I get two shells and a fire quite lucky there and got a fire on him so when they're behind an island and you definitely can't see the target use your mini map use your target circle on the mini map and place it where you think the ship's going to be next and then fire and you'll have a much more accurate time of it okay all right this carrier is obsessed with me. <laughs> I think he's going for the Koenig, actually. Alright, so what do I do now? I'm going to use the edge of this corner. The, ed the corner of the island again. Um, if you want to know which part of the ship gets you lit, it's the captain's uh, command deck, if you like. The big Koenig tower. After the three guns on the front, you'll see this big, huge tower where the helm of the ship resides the command deck and it's that that lights you so you can see I've got it's just slightly ahead of the island and so I'm lit uh, New York's returning fire on me with HE interesting I got another fire on him that'll be a perm fire so that should burn quite nicely for a while because uh, it looks like he damaged con the first one yeah so he's going to burn for a bit and I got another fire, so I managed to get two fires on him. He's in trouble. He's in he's in a lot of trouble there. Because he's got two perm fires going on him. But you see what I mean about the Miyoko being a really good fire starter? Um, if you want to learn about how to play heavy cruisers and you haven't got the Miyoko, get it. It's not hard. It's tier 7. It's quite an easy grind. You also get the Ayoba, which is an excellent ship. And you get the Brutaka, which is another excellent ship to learn the basics of heavy cruisering. If I wouldn't strictly say the Aoba is a particularly heavy cruiser, but the uh, Furtaka and Miyoko are for sure. Okay, we're going to have a go at the Miyoko. Or not. <laughs> I whiffed that, didn't I? You know, watching this video back is funny. It's, it's funny. I'm critiquing, uh, critiquing my own work here. <laughs> And you see, what, what am I doing right now? I'm reversing, what the hell? I'll tell you what I'm doing. I've realized that uh, the enemy team has a cap and we don't. So I'm reversing into A. <laughs> Why I didn't turn around and just swing her in, I have no idea. But I am reversing into A. Here, here we go. All right. This is the ultra safe way of approaching a cap in a cruiser. If you're scared because you're in a tier a 9 or 10 match, or well, you're tier 7, tier 9's the worst you're going to get. If you're in a tier 9 match and there's lots of ships that can dev strike you, doing this means that showing your ass to the enemy fleet means you can escape if you get lit very quickly. Okay, so this is actually a legitimate tactic in a higher tier game. Why the hell I'm doing it in a tier 7 match, I, can, I, I couldn't tell you, but... Uh, this is useful to know about in tier, tier 9 matches. Reversing into a cap is not such a crazy idea. It really isn't. You can do it in DDs as well if you're worried about a radar cruiser being close by. So you can quickly escape the cap if you need to. Um, especially if you're under radar. Okay. And you're a much harder target because, of course, all they can see is the back of your ship. So you can uh, swan tail away as it were, or dovetail, or whichever particular flavor of bird you want to use on that one. <laughs> this is this is hilarious. Anyway, I've, I've, I've dropped those torps for the Asturias, because I think the... not the Asturias, no, I do, do apologize, the Koenig. 
I think I was expecting the Koenig maybe to push in. But he's not, is he? He's turning the other way. He's turning out. Okay. All right. Now we've capped A, I'm looking for another island to camp while I shoot at these guys. Now I've just noticed that this Delhi is out in the open all on his own, so uh, we're going to maybe delete him. He's unsupported. I've got an island between me and the enemy ships, so this guy's a free, what I call a free frag, if we can get him. Shells are quite floaty on the Miyoka. Not the worst, not the worst, but... I've got to get my eye in on these guns. There you go. And he's slowing down. So we put some on the nose like that. Because I think he's going to full stop. And we just keep pelting him with HG rounds till we get lucky. Yep. Uh, nope. Oh, that was close, wasn't it? And the Koenig stole the frag. What a shame. Okay, fine. Now we're going to take up position on this island here, using islands again. Always keep in mind your next island. We have a cruiser, I think. Which island should I use next? And uh, make a beeline to that island and try and manage your health. Try not to lose too much health going between islands. And try not to show too much broadside. And try and be patient. I was very patient at the beginning of this match and it netted me a kill and a 42k damage. And six fires okay now we're going to realize that basically if these are 152s i'd have cleared that but because they're 203s i hit the island instead so i'm just moving up to the corner so i can get some shots over the island and into this koenig it's a congo isn't it actually i do apologize i thought it was a koenig i get my eyes tested <laughs> into the congo anyway uh i got a fire on the congo all right. Ah, uh, which he put out. Okay, and he's returning fire. And missed with all of those, which is great. Now we just reverse behind the island. Chuck the brakes on, and we can now farm him invisible. Invisi farming. That's what it's all about in cruisers. Can you invisi farm? If the answer is yes, do it. If the answer is no, well, get into gun range and then make yourself a really hard target. There you go. Finished him off. Look at that. And we're up to nine fires. I told you the Miyoko's a wicked fire starter, didn't I? She's dreadful. She she is notorious for this. Uh, she earned a rep for burning, burning enemy ships alive back in the day. And she's still a very capable cruiser for that. Okay, there's a Nagato. Now, I think I think here I, I kind of lost a bit of patience with the game. And what I should have done here, this is what you should do too, is don't take on a ship that can easily overmatch your armor. Because the, the Nagato is a tier 7 armed with 406s. And he is, or 410s, and he is going to make a nasty mess of us. There we go. Because I lost patience. I could have waited. I could have waited for a carrier to light him. Or I could have just turned away and waited for him to take on the Congo and then uh, pick my moment better. But instead, I've decided to take him on. God help me, I decide to take him on. And our team is currently losing this match. We may be ahead on points because we got a good early start, but we've only got one cap. Anyway, so I'm putting some sh shells into the Nagato. I'm absolutely adamant, aren't I, that I'm going to sink this guy. Oh dear. And of course I need to light in because the carrier hasn't lit him yet. I could have waited for the Serov's planes. I could have used my mini-map and let the Serov light him. And then I could have stayed behind the island and fired these invisible. Yeah? Instead of which, I risked everything, stuck myself out and got hit really hard. Patience is so important. Patience is so important. As is practicing what you preach. Because <laughs> here I am telling you how to play cruises. This is a good example, actually, of where I lose my rag. I lose my patience. If I'd stayed patient, I could have stayed behind the island. The Serov would have lit the Nagato and I could have free farmed him. And probably got some fires on him and made him run away. And then I could have just moved back 
to where the Congo is and then I could start picking on the New York and the Miyoko from behind the island at uh, G3. Instead of which, I have completely lost my patience with the game at this point. And uh, this is fatal. This, this is going to cost us a match. It's all about patience. It's all about using the islands. It's all about keeping a cool head. And you can see here, I'm turning into the Miyoko. I'm thinking I'm going to sink the Miyoko even though I've got like 2k health left. I'm going to use this island. Wrong island. I should have used the island at... Uh, I should have gone back to G3. Really. But we're trying this island and looking at the New York as she comes down on us with the idea that we're just going to park it here, put a jaunty angle on it and stay hidden. But I'm already detected. Okay, we get a few shells on the New York, do we? Yeah, we do. Okay, we chuck it in reverse. Reverse rudder. Chuck some torps out for the Miyoko. Who's behind an island, thank God. And the New York fires on us. And we're broadside. Whatever you do, do not get yourself caught like this. Luckily for me, his dispersion was so bad. But I'm now getting taught by their enemy carrier. And the Yoko's coming around. I'm trying to turn into the torps, but I swallow a torp and down I go. Okay, so patience in all things. Can you now see why I think the island at G3 would have been more favorable, right? It's all about picking the right island. It's all about patience. It's all about controlled aggression and keeping it chill. Don't get too excited. Don't overextend. Maintain your calm. <laughs> that was a pretty spirited game, actually. It, it shows you the strengths and weaknesses. It shows you what is right with cruiser play and what is wrong with cruiser play what you need to do to avoid what just happened to me okay so use this as a informational tutorial video if you like um i'm probably going to do another one actually i'll do i'll do another i'll, I'll, I'll uh, critique another one of my matches after this um i think probably ranked we'll do a rank match and i'll show you i'll show you how the miyoko uh, performs in this season's uh, Bronze League, and I'll give you some tips and hints on how to play her in rank. Okay, it's pretty much the same as random play, except that I'm usually a lot more patient. <laughs> I don't know why I lose my rag in randoms, but I quite often do. Uh, get to a point, don't you, where you get frustrated with your team and yeah, start making mistakes when really you might have been able to carry that i i could have probably carried this match for the team and yet and yet i lost my rag and lost my cool and picked the wrong island <laughs> yeah that happened anyway there's 34 seconds to go 33 32 it looks like a win for us doesn't it 27 26 24 uh, they've got all the caps, we've been locked out, but in 20 seconds we win, right? As long as we don't lose any ships, we win. York's a bit low. Serov's... Serov just got blown to bits. And at a thousand points, we lost. I can only assume we just lost both ships. So we lost the York and the Serov there. Right at the end, in the last 10 seconds. So I don't feel too bad about that, if I'm honest. I don't feel too bad about that because other people stuffed up even even more than I did. Players sort of, of, of a higher caliber, if you like. Okay. Yeah, these guys maintain their cool. Look at the York, yeah? Look at that score. He kept it cool and frosty right into the end. But then I assume he must have been sunk. Because if he hadn't been sunk, we'd have won. So someone or something took him out right at the, the end. So he might show us being alive, but he isn't. He got sunk. Uh, I did okay. I made top three, so I'm happy with that. Uh, there, Miyoko did very well, didn't he? 2,230. She's a good ship. If you don't have the Miyoko, flip and get her. Because she'll teach you everything you need to know about cruiser play. That's for sure. Uh, for, for the heavies. And then for the lights, pick something else. Uh, maybe go down the American line. 
uh, get the Helena or uh, go down the the Cleveland uh, all the way to the Worcestershire uh, because that's a good line of ships and that'll teach you how to play light cruisers. Uh, I'll probably do some. I'll do. I'll put. I'll probably put up a Des Moines and a, a Worcester over the next uh, week or two just to compare on play styles. Okay. So anyway, how did we do? Congo 11k. Endrak 3 3k, Heinrich 21k, New York 20k. Infatuated by the Nagato, but only did 14k to him. Let that be a lesson to me. Um, <laughs> shot down 22 planes. Wow. Okay. Right, let's do another one. Okay, so the map's big race, it's domination. We're up against the Sinop, a Shan horse, not two Shan horse, a, another Miyoko. I know it's called a dragon, something or the other, but uh, that's another Miyoko. Uh, and a Brutzi, a Hobart, and a Fubuki. Okay, and I'm on the right flank, so I'm going to head for C. There's a good reason why I'm going to head for C. I really like the island that's on the cap, and since we've only got one destroyer, Someone is going to have to be brave and cap in a cruiser, so I'm heading for D8, or at least I end up heading up to D8 in this match. Uh, again, I'm critiquing my own work here. Uh, this isn't live commentary, uh, nor was the last one. I'm actually just looking at a past match and uh, showing you guys what it takes to be a, uh, a cruiser ace. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know though, I made a real mess of the last one, I uh, I critiqued it hard, it wasn't one of my best matches, but you know what, it's the hard matches that teach you the most, if it's easy, you don't learn much, if it's hard, that's where you learn how to improve, how to up your game, and you get to, uh, I didn't use the minimap enough in that last one. I should have used the minimap more. Uh, I spent way too much time fixating on certain ships and certain situations when I really should have been more focused on the minimap and my positioning on the islands. Okay, so... <coughs> going between, RPF tells me there are ships off my port side. And then suddenly it switches to Hobart. I think there's a destroyer going into B. That's what I get. I got from that, and I'm lit. So there is a destroyer going into B right now, and he's got me lit. Or at least I assume it's a destroyer. Uh, who can say? Could be another mad bastard in a cruiser like me, right? Okay. Right, so Fubuki gets lit on the minimap. It was a destroyer after all. And that's why I was lit. But did you notice that while I was lit, the target priority for my ship was five? Which tells you there's basically five ships. Now, if you look at the minimap again, you'll see that the Shan Horse, the Sinop, and the Hobart, and the Abruzzi are all coming to sea. So, 80% mm, of their team are headed to my position, and I'm on my own at the moment with a Sinop uh, moving up to support. Now the Abruzzi is pushing me, he's confident because he's got his entire team, practically his entire team behind him. So we're just gonna reverse her up. He's hydroed me, but I'm keeping the island between me and the rest of his, his ships, his teammates, so that I don't get deleted. Okay, so really I'm, I'm picking a one-on-one -on -one fight with the Abruzzi. And I've got to use the island, and I want to use my torps on him, so I'm having to reverse like this. I'm going to have to risk a broadside. The enemy fleet is trying to hit me, but of course they've got the islands interfering with their shells. That's funny, I just ricocheted 10 shells off his incredibly tough armor. Mm. He was well angled. Okay, and I got away with it. He got some pens, but no citadels. And there go the torps. Okay, hit with two, and then finish him off with the guns. Okay. And now, I'm running like hell, because 
I know for a fact that most of their team are above my position to the uh, northwest, northwest of my situation. That's the Hobart in smoke firing at me, so I'm going to reciprocate the favor and send Torps his way. He's having a go with AP. <laughs> Good luck with that, heavy cruiser armor. You're going to bounce Hobart shells. In fact, you'll bounce the most lightweight uh, light cruiser shells, to be honest with you. As long as you're not showing too much broadside. You're not invulnerable to their damage, but you can deflect a lot of it. So again, I'm withdrawing and using islands. Um, I, I think in retrospect, I probably should have told the Synop to pull back. Um, I mean, he's a big boy, right? But uh, I, the idea of him going into three battleships and two cruisers... Mm, doesn't bear thinking about. So do use your minimap. If you see a lot of enemy ships above the cap you're about to take, run away. Withdraw. Because it's all about playing the waiting game, the patience game with cruisers. So we're down two ships each, which is interesting. So it's quite a close match. This one. And again, I'm using the island for now, and I'm thinking about moving up to support the Synop. I'm going to try and help him. But I'm going to just use the edge of this island to shoot at the Sharn horse. Now I'm lit because the front of my ship is poking out. Okay, the bridge, if you like. The bridge structure of my ship is sticking out. If I can get that bridge structure behind an island, doesn't matter if the bow and the bow guns are sticking out. You can shoot and viz all day long. So I'm just going to reverse it until... Until my bridge is uh, hidden. But I've got a feeling their Miyoko is going to light me anyway. Can you see the S Dragon? That's their Miyoko, the S Dragon up there. At uh, his last loan location was C5. And he's got me lit, so he's in the area. Which is unfortunate. Okay, I managed to get fire on the uh, Sharn Horse. And you can see the other Sharn Horse is pushing the Synop. So we're going to try and help him out with that. See if we can uh, load the dice for him. And again, using the island, the enemy fleet would have to shoot through that volcano or whatever it is on that island to try and hit me. So again, keeping the island between me and the fleet. We're picking a one-on-one -on -one engagement with the Sharn Horse, who is totally focused right now on our Synop. I am feathering it a little bit. I don't like the idea of getting uh, citadeled, so I'm putting a bit of angle on. And then I'm firing... Sure enough, I get hit, but it's HG. Fire on the ass. Set my ass on fire. And we're going to put another set of shells into the Sharn Horse. There we go. Yeah, seven hits. And the Synop takes him down with his uh, Russian AP. Unfortunately, he swallows quite a few of the Sharn Horse torps. So the Synop is not very well, but he took out the Sharn Horse. They, they, it's, it's a fair trade. There's the Miyoko or S Dragon. Exactly the same ship as I'm in, just a different paint job, really, and another premium. Um, I switched to AP because I was looking at the angle and thinking, there's a chance here. There's a slight chance I might get lucky and Citadel is ass. So I try AP. But he's figured this and he's angled he's he's put just enough angle on to make my ap ricochet if you look bottom left you can see he's the green ship above the red ship the red ship's me and he's got an angle of 127 degrees at the moment which is just enough to stop my ap from being particularly effective the ap is only really good for a flat forward side you don't get improved pen angles with the miyoko so they've got to be you're looking at angles of around 90 to 100 if you want, if you want citadels, any, anything over or under that, and chances are you're going to ricochet or bounce. So you're better off using the HE. That's true of most ships in this game. You have some exceptions that have improved AP angles, like some of the Russian battleships and the American cruisers with the heavy uh, AP shells. They get improved angles as well. All right, so... Peeking to look at the Sharn Horse. 
Again, using the island. I've got a sin up coming down on me that I'm very aware of. So I'm staying hidden. This is where the patience kicks in. Just stay patient. Don't push anything. Because we're down to 3v3. Every ship now counts. And I'm thinking that Hobart is moving across. His last known position was B6 going into B7. So we're going to head up. But giving the Synop lots on lots of respect as we go. Uh, you notice the Synop's got this massive island between him and me. And we can use that to our advantage to close on the Hobart. Which is exactly what I'm doing here. Staying dark. Close on the Hobart. If I can remove the Hobart, that's one less ship to worry about, isn't it? And I'll be doing the team a favour in the process. Island interfered with my shells on the Shan Horse, but that's okay. Okay, got the uh, Hydro on, so I can light the Sin up if he decides to change course and head at me. I'll get plenty of early warning on that. Also, the Hobart has torpedoes, so it'll be useful for that. I, I'm expecting to encounter him very shortly. There he is. He's a lot further out than I was expecting. I thought he would push into cap, uh, but no. I'll leave those for the Synop, because you never know. And now I'm lit, and I don't care, because the Synop can't really hit me at the moment. I'm kind of hoping he will turn sharp to try and get me. But he seems absolutely focused on our Italian battleship. He's on pretty low health, actually. That's, that's probably why he did that. That's why he did that. He was much more interested in finishing off the Italian battleship than uh, trying to take me on. He knows he can handle a Miyoko, so hence the reason the Torps missed. Okay. See, I tried to bait him. Baiting is good. You, you show them a juicy carrot. You say, look, there's a Miyoko over here on low health. Please come and sink me. And if you bait him into your torpedo war, it's over for him. Yeah? So that's an effective tactic to use in a torpedo cruiser. Okay, try and bait your targets into your torpedo spreads. Um, one of the masters at this is Flamu. If you if you're not sure about how to torpedo bait, just watch a few of his videos. He'll uh, put you straight on how to tor bait with torpedoes. Uh, specifically, probably when he's playing Kitakaze or um, or a torpedo cruiser. Pick any any torpedo cruiser will do. Okay, so we're just going to finish off the Hobart now. Got some one... Managed to find some one-on-one -on -one time with the Hobart. Going to send some torps his way. Yeah, got a fire on him. He's low health. Torps are going in. And we just finish him off. Okay, there we go. That's the Hobart dealt with. Synop had a go with his rear turrets, but I was angled. And uh, they ching chinked off my armor, which is quite fortunate, really. Good to know that angled, I can actually handle that Russian AP. Okay, and then we're turning. Now, what I should have done here is I should have found... You see that huge gap between those tor two torpedoes? I should have just sat in the gap and been patient. But here I lose my patience a little and think, Ah, sod it. We're near the end of the match. We've almost won. We've got a minute to go. I can swallow a torpedo. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> so I did. Uh, I wanted to get back into C and grab the points for the team and make damn sure of the win because I have seen matches lost at this stage. Bizarrely, uh, the the uh, Italian battleship, they've almost got him. And if everything could change. Now, do you notice I just got two fires on the Sinnoh? She is a wicked fire start of this ship. So I can put some pressure on him because I'm behind this island. So there's no reason not to shoot. Free damage, free farm. So I'm free farming the Sinnoh. Unfortunately, he's not lit. 
But we're decapping him in the process as well, so he's not getting he's not getting to take the cap. I should be able to light him any second, any second now. As my bridge goes between the gap, bridge is a ship to his, and there he is, and we win. Okay, so I hope you've learned something from these these videos. Uh, I hope this improves your cruiser playstyle. Um, watch this channel. I will do. There will be more cruiser videos over the next uh, day and week. Thank you all very much for watching. There you go, top of the team. Not bad. Uh, 23k on the Abruzzi. 12k on the Hobart. Uh, that's your job as a heavy cruiser to take out enemy cruisers and uh, to put some pressure on destroyers while you're at it too. Okay, not a bad match. Not a bad match, if I say so myself. Thank you all very much for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.